Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to take a look at the derivative of secant and cosecant. So when you take the derivative of secant, it simply turns into secant of x multiplied by tangent of x. Now when you take the derivative of cosecant of x, then it turns into negative cosecant of x multiplied by cotangent of x. These are probably one of the most difficult of trigonometric derivatives to try and memorize. One thing that you want to note with both of these derivatives is that the function itself shows up in its derivative. So the derivative of secant, oh, look, there's our little secant function, and it's being multiplied by tangent. Same thing with our cosecant. You know, you take its derivative, oh, there's our little cosecant of x right there multiplied by cotangent, and this one also has a negative sign. We're going to play around with these two derivative um, uh, rules and just get a little bit more practice with them, okay? We'll first do this in this example. So our function is 3 multiplied by cosecant of, secant of x plus 5x. So we want to know what is its derivative. All right. The very first thing we need to take care of is this cosecant of x. So its derivative is negative cosecant times cotangent. So let's move that negative all the way out front and then write cosecant of x multiplied by cotangent of x. All right, so that takes care of the derivative of, say, just this guy. Now we take care of the derivative of the rest of it, just as normal. So the derivative of 5x is 5. Okay, so you can see the rule, even though it is kind of difficult to remember, it does work just like all the other derivative rules. It's not that bad if you know what it turns into. Let's try another example, say, using our product rule and these new uh, trigonometric rules. So in this one, I have e to the x multiplied by secant of x. So I really have two functions being multiplied together here. So I need to find their derivative using our product rule. So the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of our first. All right, so let's see what we can do. So the derivative, now let's start with our first function, that's e to the x, just as it is. Then we'll multiply by the derivative of secant. So this one is secant of x, multiplied by tangent of x. Okay, and that takes care of that derivative. Plus, now we'll have our second function just as it is, multiplied by the derivative of, say, our first one, and the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. Okay, not too bad. Looks like both of these pieces have an e to the x, and both of them also have a secant x. So, you know, I might as well just write this as, say, e to the x, secant of x, all multiplied by, say, tangent of x, still that piece in there, plus 1. And then this derivative is done as well. All right, so with these uh, two new rules, uh, when you start taking the derivative of, say, secant, uh, it does get a little bit more complicated if you start getting into higher derivatives. So for this very last example, we're going to try and take two derivatives of 3 secant of x. Let's start off with the first derivative. So the 3 will not have much of an effect. We'll just move it out front and take the derivative of secant. Okay, so by itself, this derivative doesn't look too bad. It's simply secant of x multiplied by tangent of x. Okay, so our first derivative is done. Now when I go to do the second derivative, now here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Now I actually have two trigonometric functions being multiplied by one another. So I have to figure out uh, what is the derivative of, say, our secant, and what is the derivative for our tangent, so we can use it in our product rule. All right, so let's carefully, carefully give that a try. First, we're going to take the 3 and move it out front of all of our work for a derivative. We don't want to mess it up uh, just yet. And now we'll take the derivative of just these two parts together. So we have our first function, secant of x. Now I need the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So secant squared of x. Okay, that takes care of those guys. Plus, now my second function, tangent of x, multiplied by the derivative of the first one, and the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Secant of x times tangent of x. All right, so you can see even after just two derivatives, uh, this thing gets a lot more complicated very quickly. 
Uh, so let's see, what can we do to clean this up a little bit? Well, I might as well just start combining things in here. So I have a three, then I'll have my secant uh, cubed of x. Then over here, I have plus a secant of x times a tangent squared of x. So about the only thing that I really can do to simplify this is maybe take out a secant since it's common in both parts. So three secant of x. Now let's see, all of that would still be multiplied by secant squared of x plus tangent squared of x. And then we can go ahead and call this one done. But note, if we had to take even one more derivative of this, then again, I'd have to start using my product rule to take care of both of these portions. And we might even have to borrow a little bit of the chain rule to take care of the inside part here. All right. So be careful with these new rules. They are kind of difficult to remember. Uh, but once you have them down, they're not too bad to apply. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.